What if China just beat NVIDIA at its own game, and nobody in the West noticed? While headlines scream about NVIDIA's trillion-dollar dominance, something massive is happening behind the curtain. Deep inside Huawei's labs, a new generation of AI chips is being built, faster, cheaper, and outside U.S. control. The West tried to ban China from cutting-edge semiconductors, but instead, they may have just sparked a revolution. So, what is this secret chip? How is it being used? And why are countries in the Middle East, Southeast Asia, even Latin America, starting to ditch American tech in favor of Huawei? This isn't just a tech story, it's a global shift in power. Let's break it down. For years, the US has worked to isolate Huawei, banning exports, blacklisting the company, and cutting off access to cutting edge chips from Nvidia and AMD. The goal? To freeze China's progress in AI and semiconductors. But here's what many investors and analysts missed. While the West was focused on restrictions, Huawei was quietly building its own chip empire. In 2023, Huawei shocked the world by releasing the Ascend 91B, a homegrown AI chip reportedly comparable to NVIDIA's A100, despite US sanctions. The chip wasn't just a one-off, it became the backbone of China's domestic AI infrastructure. Fast forward to 2025, and Huawei is now rolling out next-generation versions of the Ascend series, including rumored 91C and B300 variants. Early leaks suggest these chips are optimized for massive-scale AI models and possibly integrated into Huawei's AI factories, powerful modular data centers built specifically for artificial intelligence training. These aren't just theories. Chinese AI startups are already using Ascend chips in everything from image generation to industrial robotics. And now, we're seeing something even more disruptive. Foreign governments are showing interest. Several reports indicate that UAE, Saudi Arabia, and Indonesia have either signed cooperation deals or begun testing Huawei's AI hardware. Why? Because Huawei offers what NVIDIA can't. No reliance on US licenses, lower cost, and built-in compatibility with China's AI software ecosystem like Mindspore. Even Russia and Brazil have hinted at potential collaborations, seeing Huawei as a path to digital sovereignty. And in regions where US export controls are seen as political weapons, Huawei's chips are suddenly a very attractive option. The West may still dominate headlines, but Huawei is quietly flooding new markets with AI infrastructure, piece by piece. And the implications for global tech and NVIDIA's bottom line are enormous. If you think Huawei is just selling chips, think again. In 2025, the real game isn't about hardware. It's about building entire AI ecosystems. And that's exactly what Huawei is doing with its newest creation, AI factories. So what are they? AI factories are modular data centers designed to train, deploy, and scale artificial intelligence models at industrial speed. Think of them as a combination of NVIDIA's DGX clusters, AWS cloud infrastructure, and a private version of OpenAI's training centers, all rolled into one, but fully controlled by Huawei. Instead of selling just one chip, Huawei now sells the whole system. Racks of Ascend processors, power-efficient cooling systems, integrated software like Mindspore AI, and connections to China's growing AI cloud. They're offering countries a plug-and-play solution to become AI powers without relying on U.S. tech. It's not just hype. Huawei has already announced plans to build multiple AI factories across China in provinces like Guangdong, Sichuan, and Inner Mongolia, where cheap land and renewable energy are abundant. These hubs are being used to train large language models, simulate smart cities, and even run logistics for state-owned enterprises. But here's where things get even more interesting. Huawei is now exporting this model abroad. According to leaks from regional media, Huawei is in early talks with officials in Saudi Arabia, Egypt, and Malaysia to deploy scaled-down AI factories tailored for local use, especially in smart surveillance, oil infrastructure optimization, and automated traffic control. These countries don't want to just buy chips. They want to own the future of AI, and Huawei is giving them the tools. And let's not forget the software. Unlike NVIDIA, which depends heavily on CUDA and US-licensed AI tools, Huawei is pushing its open-source Mindspore framework, a TensorFlow rival designed to run best on Ascend chips. 
Developers from Southeast Asia and Africa are already contributing to the ecosystem, seeing it as a rare chance to break free from Silicon Valley's control. With this full-stack strategy, chip plus factory plus software, Huawei isn't just catching up. It's building an alternative AI world, one data center at a time. And for countries tired of U.S. tech politics, that world is starting to look very tempting. When the U.S. blacklisted Huawei in 2019, the message was clear. Cut off China's access to advanced chips, and their tech ambitions would stall. But here's what actually happened. Huawei didn't just survive. It adapted, improvised, and came back stronger. So how is Huawei producing powerful AI chips like the Ascend 910B, even under some of the strictest export controls in modern history? Let's start with SMIC, China's top semiconductor foundry. Despite lacking EUV lithography machines from ASML, SMIC has made major progress in advanced chip production using older DUV technology and clever workarounds. In 2023, SMIC shocked the industry by producing a 7 nanometers chip for Huawei's Mate 60 Pro, defying expectations. Behind the scenes, engineers have reportedly been using multi-patterning techniques, increased computational design, and extensive trial and error manufacturing to push old equipment to its limits. The result? It's not as efficient as TSMC or Samsung, but it works, and it's good enough to power AI. But that's only half the story. Huawei also benefits from a global gray zone of tech transfers. Sources inside the supply chain suggest Huawei is quietly sourcing critical components, like high bandwidth memory, HBM, and server parts, from third-party suppliers in Southeast Asia and the Middle East. These intermediaries aren't officially sanctioned, making enforcement almost impossible. Even some U.S. firms, unknowingly or otherwise, may still have parts ending up in Huawei systems via complex global distributors. Meanwhile, China is doubling down on self-reliance. Billions in state subsidies are flowing into Huawei's partners to create replacements for American tools, from chip design software to advanced lithography. New startups in Shenzhen and Shanghai are rising fast, fueled by government-backed AI survival plans. And there's a psychological factor, too. The sanctions have united Chinese tech firms like never before. Domestic collaboration between Huawei, SMIC, and China's cloud giants like Alibaba and Baidu is accelerating. They're not waiting for permission anymore. They're building their own stack. Ironically, the U.S. attempt to contain China may have triggered the opposite effect. A massive national push for tech independence, with Huawei at the center. So when you hear that Huawei can't make chips anymore, remember, they're already doing it. Quietly. Efficiently. And soon, globally. While Huawei is quietly rewriting the rules of the AI game, the West is waking up. And not everyone is happy. Let's start with NVIDIA. The company has long been the crown jewel of the AI boom, with its H100 and upcoming Blackwell chips powering everything from chat GPT to Wall Street algorithms. But Huawei's resurgence is now sparking serious questions. What happens when an entire region of the world chooses Huawei instead of NVIDIA? In 2024, NVIDIA was still shipping sanction-safe chips to China, weakened versions like the A800 and H20, stripped of advanced capabilities. But reports from late 2025 suggest that Chinese buyers are losing interest. Why? Because Huawei's domestic chips are catching up, and they don't come with restrictions, license risks, or sudden political reversals. Even worse for NVIDIA, Huawei isn't just competing in China. The company is aggressively targeting emerging markets, offering full-stack solutions that NVIDIA simply doesn't provide. Governments in Africa, Southeast Asia, and the Middle East are now evaluating Huawei not just as a vendor, but as a strategic partner for their national AI plans. Meanwhile, Washington is watching with growing concern. Congressional briefings have started mentioning Huawei's Ascend chips by name. One leaked memo from a U.S. defense consultant called the rise of Huawei's AI ecosystem a red-level strategic threat. There's talk of new legislation to pressure allies not to adopt Huawei data center infrastructure, echoing the old 5G bands, but with AI. But here's the problem. The world has changed. Many nations don't want to pick sides anymore. They want autonomy. They want options. And Huawei is offering that. Back in Silicon Valley, some investors are in denial. They still believe NVIDIA's lead is too big to be challenged. But others, especially global hedge funds, are quietly hedging against U.S. chip stocks, 
and reallocating capital toward Asia's AI infrastructure. The market knows that monopolies don't last forever. And while NVIDIA's margins remain sky-high today, it's no longer guaranteed they'll dominate tomorrow. So the question becomes, is the West trying to contain something it no longer fully understands? Because Huawei isn't shouting, it's building, quietly, globally, and with purpose. And every day, the world edges closer to a future where AI doesn't begin in Silicon Valley, but in Shenzhen. The world is changing fast. While most eyes are still locked on NVIDIA, something bigger may be taking shape, quietly, persistently, and far from Wall Street's radar. Huawei isn't just making chips, it's creating a parallel AI future, one that doesn't rely on US hardware, software, or permissions. From Ascend processors to full-blown AI factories, from Mindspore to sovereign data infrastructure, Huawei is doing what few thought possible just a few years ago. Is it better? That depends on your perspective. But one thing is clear, it's here, and it's not going away. The next battleground won't be Silicon Valley versus Shenzhen, it'll be every country deciding whose digital infrastructure to trust. So, where does that leave NVIDIA? And the West? That's the question we'll keep exploring on this channel. If you found this video eye-opening, hit like, subscribe, and turn on the bell. Because the AI race is just getting started, and check out our next video, where we reveal how China's newest AI alliances are reshaping tech power in the Middle East. See you there.